I have a, a bit of a soft spot for North Korea. And I'm not sure if it's because my wife is Korean or, or what it is, but I find myself reading the news a, a, a little more attentively when it's about North Korea. And, and, and I've seen the stories of the starvation. I've watched documentaries of orphans that will spend their entire lives in orphanages and, and, and until they're an adult, never know the, the loving touch of another human. And just watching the human rights atrocities in North Korea is something that just, is, it's very personal for some reason to me and striking uh, to me. That's why last December when I had an opportunity to watch a news story uh, of a guy named Shin Donghyuk, it was, it was, it grabbed my attention. This is a young man who spent his life in a, a North Korean uh, political prison camp called Camp 14. Now, Camp 14 is, is a place that North Korea says doesn't exist, but we can see it on Google Maps. They also believe that Google Maps doesn't exist. So, um, but this political prison camp is specifically for those who have done crimes against the state. And yet Shin never did anything. He was born in this prison camp. In fact, his parents didn't do anything wrong. His mom and his dad. It was because some of his relatives had at one point tried to defect to South Korea. And if anyone plans on doing that or attempts doing that, their entire family to three generations is imprisoned. And so Shin Donghyuk was born in Camp 14, and it's the only life he ever knew. Every day, he, he, he got up and he just did what he was told. He obeyed, because in his mind, there were two types of people in the entire world. There were prisoners and there were guards, and you were born as either a prisoner or a guard, and that's how you lived your life. In his mind, everything outside of the electrified fence was the same as everything inside the electrified fence. There were just more prisons out there with prisoners or guards. So every day when he, he woke up, he would do what he was told, and usually it was hard labor. Every day he would eat what he was told, which was usually cabbage or a cornmeal gruel, and, and sometimes they would find rats or other insects that they could add to their meals, but for the most part, he was always hungry, he was always tired from the hard labor, but that's just how life was. He lived that way for 23 years, and everything changed in one moment, because he met a man named Park. Park. A man who came from outside the electrified fence. A man who had lived out openly in North Korea. In fact, he had had opportunities to travel even to China. So he told Shin stories about cities that he'd been to and about what it was like to travel to another country. And all of those stories paled in comparison to one that he told. Because he told Shin that outside the electrified fence there was something called broiled chicken. And that there were places in this world where people could eat broiled chicken any time they wanted to eat it. And so Shin had never tasted broiled chicken, but he knew exactly what it tasted like. It tasted like freedom. And it became his, his mission in life to, to taste broiled chicken. And so he and Park began to plot a scheme to escape. And here's the deal. If you even think of escaping and anyone even has a rumor that you're going to escape, they take you out and execute you. So they knew this was a they either escape or they die scenario, but chicken was worth it. So he and his friend one day went to a very remote part of the electrified fence and, and Park went first and was immediately electrocuted to death on the fence. And Shin had to make a decision. Does he stay and get killed or does he climb over his friend's dead body and hopefully live? So he climbed up on Park's back and, 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 and his body had shorted out that section of the fence so he made it over. He made his way to now living in Seoul, South Korea. This is the only person that, that we're aware of that has ever made it out of Camp 14 and, and lived to tell the story. And now he lives in freedom. Now he can eat broiled chicken anytime he wants. And chicken and freedom were purchased by his friend who laid down his life for him on the electrified fence. 
If you've been with us over the last three weeks or so, we've been working our way through the book of Galatians where we've been telling a very similar story. Because Galatians tells the story of the gospel, which essentially is this. Every one of us is born as a prisoner. We're a prisoner to sin, and it's the only life we know. And we have hungers, and we have desires, and we're told that the only thing that can satisfy these hungers is sin. And so we're drawn to sinful pleasure, and yet it always leaves us hungry. It always leaves us thirsting for more. We're unsatisfied. And then this man, Jesus, who's also God, shows up on the scene and says that there is a different life on the other side of the electrified fence. A a life where he himself is the bread of life. He himself is living water that he can satisfy. But there's no way we can make it over that electrified fence. The only way possible out of this camp of our life is that he laid his life down for us on the cross, essentially laying on the electrified fence so we by faith could climb over him to freedom. He laid down his life so that we might live. And, 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 and we come to faith in Jesus just trusting him that what he says about the other side of the electrified fence is true. 